welcome to the Movie Mouth Film and TV Podcast. This week we have an especially epic, action-packed episode. Getting Dark and Dirty in the DCEU and viral victory Zack Snyder's Justice League and the monster mashup to end them all with the eardrum-bursting, cornea-tearing, lizard-on-ape epic Godzilla vs. Kong. On top of it all, every week we discuss a classic film in our video store corner section. And this week, we'll be sticking to suitably action-packed climbs in the world's greatest trucker slash arm wrestling family drama. Yes, it's 1987's Over the Top, starring none other than Sylvester Stallone himself. More of that later in this very episode. This is Miles. And as ever, I'm joined by a man who famously once told me, Oh, you motherfuckers, okay, I'm putting cases on all you bitches, huh? You think you can do this shit, Miles? You think you can do this to me? You motherfuckers will be playing basketball in Pelican Bay when I get finished with you. Shoe program, homie. 23-hour lockdown. I'm the man up in this piece. You'll never see the light of... Who the fuck do you think you're fucking with? I'm the police. I run this shit here. You just live here. Yeah, that's right. You better walk away. Go on, walk away, because I'm going to burn this motherfucker down. King Kong ain't got shit on me. Anyway, I'm going to burn all this shit, and that's right. Shit, I don't give a fuck. I'm winning anyway. I'm winning. I'm winning any motherfucking way. I can't lose. Shit, you can shoot me, but you can't kill me. That's right, it's Phil. Hi, Phil. <laughs> oh, hi there. <laughs> All right. How are you? Um, slightly flabbergasted, I think, is the uh, way to It was it. a weird <laughs> moment when you said that to me. The accent changed, the intonations on the way. I don't even know. Why did you say that to me? I can't remember. It was a long time ago now. 2003, I think it was, wasn't it? We had a, a, a special training day. At <laughs> our, was way, way back then. At our company, didn't we? <laughs> Was um what was what you just did there politically correct? I don't care. <laughs> um so how have you been, Phil? What have you been up to? What's new? Uh what have I been up to? Well, watching th- watching stuff for the podcast, haven't I? Oh really? What have you been watching? Yeah. Uh well, so I've got one episode left of Snowpiercer season two on Netflix. I think I talked about that in the last couple of episodes. Um, so yeah, one episode to go. They released both of the final, ep- well, the last two episodes on the same day, a couple of days ago. So we've watched one, but I need to watch one more. Looking forward mm-hmm. to seeing how they finish that season. I don't know. How m- to be honest, I don't know how much they've got planned for that. I don't know if it, how long it's going to carry on. Mm-hmm. But I'm enjoying it. That's fine. Um, what else have I been watching? Ah, I've watched a few episodes of a series called. Uh, Call My Agent on Netflix. Call My Son. (laughs) Call My Son. Um, uh, Yeah, which is a French series on Netflix, a comedy Mm. series about a fictional uh, talent agency. Um, It's it's really good from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Um, I really liked it, yeah. Seen a few episodes, got uh, some good guest stars in it. French language Uh, show, right? French language, yeah. yeah. I've heard it's really good. I've heard it's it is really good, good, yeah. I, yeah. I think is it really a comedy? Like it. Yeah, it's comedy, yeah. Huh. But it's sort of, it's got some serious moments in it, but it's quite yeah. sort of lighthearted most of the time. It's quite sort of, not slapstick, but it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good comedy. It's good. And ha- how have you been getting along with your honour? Well, I am, I think, three episodes into that now. <laughs> I've managed to... You, you uh, think? crawl out of the uh, depression hole that I suffered after watching the first episode. Mm. And yeah, I think we're three episodes in. It's, it's Don't get me wrong. It's brilliant and I'm really liking it, but it's mm. a hard watch. <laughs> it really just, is. Um, yeah. And thanks, yeah. thanks for the eight hours of depression that you've given me because <laughs> yeah, I finished the fucking thing based on your recommendation. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's your own doing. Dear therapist, I need a three-hour session this week to just uh, decamp some of the feelings that I've got about uh, (laughs) this show. It's great, though, isn't it? It Do you know what? I I, I really, I was hooked straight away. Yeah. I was watching it, and then we were texting each other while I was watching it. The first episode is very, very, very bleak. But I think what's interesting about this, for me, like the most interesting thing is that Brian Cranston, who is basically world-famous for 
having a role in a show where he is a um, good guy, family man that is a, potentially about to lose it all, has to sacrifice his morals and, you know, potentially his family by covering up or creating, becoming a, a worse person and backtracking on his own kind of moral belief yeah. and this kind of moral dilemma. It's a really weird role for him to go from Walter White to go to a judge who's basically kind of, you know, going through something similar. Obviously it's not, he's not trying to become a gangster, but in essence he's, he's committing, you know, crimes and yeah, but still no one does it better than, than, uh, than Cranston. And no. it was also written by Peter Moffat, who I think I recommended it to you, but if, if you, if you never saw it, Riz Ahmed oh, yeah. was in, was in a, was in a show um, which, uh, which was really cool, which is, which was really great called the night of, and it was very similar. This was about a taxi driver who maybe did, didn't commit a crime in New York. And it was following around the kind of American judicial system and, and court based system and lawyers and legal practices and police and all that kind of thing. But the one right. thing I will say about this show is there is nobody likable in it. Not one character is likable in the entire show. Well, in not your one. honor or in your honor, not one, not one character. Yeah, not so far. <laughs> I've seen, and that doesn't change. That doesn't change. Yeah. Um, but but nonetheless, very depressing. I tell you what, I did also watch on net on Netflix. This was, which I think you will love, mm. and uh, many of our listeners who like sport based documentaries, uh, is the Formula One Drive to Survive ah, series, yes. which has just been released. The third season just been released on Netflix. It's an incredible mm. docu series behind, obviously, the the world of Formula One and Grand Prix, mm -hmm. and. You could say a lot of things about racing drivers, mostly that they all seem pretty boring when they're, when they're interviewed, kind of cold, stayed. You know, there's n not a lot of excitement out off the track, right? Mm. This does away with all of that. You, you see the real drivers. You see the real rivalries. You see the, the team leads, you know, the bosses like Toto Wolff at Mercedes and uh, Christian Horner at Red Bull. You see them all yeah. locking horns. Uh, off off the track and behind the scenes, and it's brilliant. I yeah, I need smashed to watch it. I'm a big Formula One fan, but I haven't watched it. I haven't watched any of that yet, and I keep meaning. I was to. growing up, but I, but this will definitely make me watch. I think now now I know a little bit more background to the to the Formula One. Yeah, I'll definitely watch keep it. up with it. New season kicked weekend. off last weekend. It did indeed. Yes, it did indeed. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just finally last night about two a.m. I watched uh, Spaceballs for the one millionth time. <laughs> oh, yes. Which, if any of our listeners haven't seen the Mel Brooks comedy Spaceballs, which is a real kind of takeoff of a lot of those 70s and 80s sci-fis, like Alien, Star Wars, and so on, then uh, you have to watch Spaceballs. You do. It's um, I, From the I, opening I'd... scene, like when like the yellow wording is coming up, and the first <laughs> thing says, once upon a time warp. It, yeah. I don't know why, that just cracks me up. <laughs> like... Not like a long time ago in a, in a galaxy far, far away. Once upon a time warp, like from that moment on, I'm just I love that crying. Film. I've not yeah. seen it for a while, but I, I, yeah, I think I'm going to watch that again soon. I hear your Schwartz is as big as mine, Phil. <laughs> May the Schwartz be with you. <laughs> is that I love it politically correct? What you just did, um, uh, and then finally, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what, one other aspect of of shows Disney Plus is Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna review this fully, I think, on the next episode. But I just wanted to let our listeners know that I am watching it, and we uh, we will be reviewing it. Um, but there's just a lot to get into in that show. Uh, but it's brilliant so far. I mean, the first episode is action packed to say the least. So that's what we've been watching this week, quite a bit to get into on the review side. But before we get there, have you got any news for us, Phil? Couple of bits, yeah. So first. Strangely, both the news items I have are, in a way, Godzilla versus Kong related. That's because you're obsessed. I am absolutely obsessed. It's your favorite movie of all time. Don't spoil the review. <laughs> I'm going to say it's probably my favorite movie. Of all Is time. it better than Citizen Kane? Oh, yeah, 100%. You've never seen <laughs> Citizen Kane, have you? No. Um, <laughs> I do own it, though, but I've not watched it. <laughs> You'd, you'd, uh, you'd prefer to watch Kane versus Kong, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, yes. So the first one is that, the news that Godzilla versus Kong has opened to the biggest um, pandemic-era box office opening weekend 
since yeah since the pandemic began so that's really good news i think so apparently it's um it's grossed 9.6 million dollars in north america on wow. wednesday so um yeah and they think uh, and obviously cinemas aren't open everywhere that we're going mm-hmm. at the moment not mm-hmm. open over here but it's yeah it's got the biggest take since since all the shit hit the fan um and they reckon it's going to expect uh, exceed expectations and they and because it's done really well in like hong, uh, hong kong and stuff as well um so yeah i think it, a, a quite a cynical move well. to shoehorn hong kong into the actual movie as well yeah I to know. get that chinese audience which is yeah, always something that the big idea, the big studios do paid off yeah um, but um i mean it's interesting because the, the theaters are still closed here you can't go to the cinema still in new york no uh and and california but they they are open pretty much everywhere else but the fact oh, that okay. you can watch it on at home on hbo max and yeah. people are still going out to the cinema to see it is a big thing so that's always yeah. encouraging yeah yeah no it's good you know it's good that they've been it's been released sort of same time everywhere so it gives people a chance to watch it but i think actually i'll discuss that more in my review a little bit so i'll skip to the next one um and th- so Adam Wingard, who directed uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, has uh, is reported that he's on board now to direct the Thundercats movie. So this can oh! be very interesting. <laughs> so this can be really interesting because apparently I think it's going to be a, a like an animated sort of like hybrid oh. CGI and animation. Okay. Um. What, like like the Ninja Turtles movies? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't know. There's yeah. not a huge amount. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like hybrid. Um, but apparently he's like a huge fan of the original Who series. Well, yeah. I mean, anyone of that. I think he's a similar age to us. So My, my brothers used to bully me because they used to say that I was in love with Chitara. And I, and I were, definitely though, wasn't. You, you, no, you were. I actually was. I actually was. Yeah. But I was just embarrassed by that. <laughs> also, the fact that she was on my bed sheets as well is a worrying oh, thing. That is worrying. I've got horrible images in my head now. <laughs> God. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. That is exciting because I think it, it's weird because obviously it's people of a certain age that are going to enjoy that and be, and it, it's, you know, hopefully it will reinvigorate the series a bit because it's, it's not, they haven't done anything that I know of with it, have they? The Thundercats since no. the eighties. There, there's still no TV. There, there's, there's been a long-running TV show, more of an anime-style t- uh, TV show. Right, um, but it, I mean, you're right. It's truly the last. Uh, you know, Go- Ghostbusters, Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, GI Joe, all that stuff. <clears throat> GI Joe. It's truly the last bastion of our childhood that Hollywood hasn't fucking ruined. So why not ruin <laughs> Thundercats as well? Might as well go. Uh, might as well go for it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, why? Not? What else could we? Thundercats, that's right. Yes, we all love Thundercats growing up. Let's fucking ruin that as well, shall we? <laughs> yeah, they, they're in the meeting. Like, have we fucked up Thundercats yet? No? Okay, sign us up. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, yeah. Oh, well, we'll give it a too. chance. I mean, should we give it a chance? I don't know. Let's talk about, chance. let's talk about Godzilla and Kong later. We yeah. Can maybe, we can maybe go into that. Was that it from you? That was it. Uh, your news, as usual, outdoes mine. Um, all I can pick up, all I picked up on this week was some pretty cool, exciting news that Netflix has just greenlit after splashing four hundred million dollars. Uh, the next installment of the Knives Out movies. Mm. So, uh, if you remember Knives Out, which was a Ryan Johnson movie starring Daniel Craig, um, Christopher Plummer, um, basically it was intended that there would be a sequel, a kind of. Um, you know, a kind of fo- a kind of follow on sequel with um, Daniel Craig's uh, kind of Kentucky Fried detective uh, Benoit Blanc um, going and uh, and solving yet another crime. Um, and this is actually being greenlit into two new movies that are going to be on Netflix, following on from the first one, um, and will actually begin shooting in June this June in Greece, which is I think pretty much the only place you're allowed to travel to in Europe at the moment. Right. Um, yeah. And that sees Ryan Johnson back to direct and obviously Daniel Craig coming back on board. Uh, I love that movie. Uh, did you see Knives Out? I don't think I've seen No, I don't think I saw it. No. Really good. I think you'd really like it. It's de- yeah. definitely up your alley. And um, a lot of people, Ryan Johnson has his detractors because of the the second newest Star Wars movie um, that he was part of. But but this was right there in his territory. I really enjoyed Knives Out and I'm I'm definitely up for that. Really well written. 
Yeah. Um, and then Marvel News Klaxon. Um, <laughs> Taika Waititi, so um, who obviously directed Thor Ragnarok, he returns directing uh, Thor Love and Thunder, which has also added a really interesting new name in the franchise with none other than DC Comics's Jor-El, a.k.a. Superman's dad from Man of Steel, Russell right. Crowe switching uh, comic book studio allegiances to join the cast uh, on this next Thor movie, which is interesting. Um, and the, you yeah. gotta, are you ready for this? The, the cast list on this movie is pretty crazy. Um, so okay. Chris Pratt and obviously the cast of Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy are going to be in this. Natalie Portman is going to be in this. Matt Damon is going to be in this. Sam Neill is going to be in this. Melissa wow. McCarthy and Christian Bloody Bale. So Jesus. Um, that's a hell of a hell of an ensemble. And filming starts on that in May this year. I believe they're filming down under to work around some of okay. the um, you know, the shooting restrictions that, that, that there are in Europe and the US at the moment. Um, but yeah. I'm up for that. Uh, Thor Ragnarok was just such a different and hilarious and amazing movie. Um, and uh, this will no doubt be more of the same. So sign me up. Sign me up, Sally. So the period between episodes saw a huge amount of new releases, but we picked what we believe to be the most movie mouth friendly content to review this week. And we'll start with the biggest ever monster mashup since Trump versus Biden. <laughs> yes, it's Phil reviewing Godzilla versus Kong. Godzilla versus Kong. Eagerly awaited by me, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> and the world, so, apparently, it was a very, very popular trailer. When it that's right. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, this is the fourth film in what's now known as the Monsterverse. Uh, we previously had 2014's Godzilla and then um, uh, Kong Skull Island in 2017 and then the more recent uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters in 2019. Um I must admit, I've not seen King of the Monsters. I sort of forgot it existed, if I'm honest. Um, but I do like, I, I saw the other two at the cinema and I do I do really like them. I, you know, again, it's similar to this. It's just, you know, they're just good sort of fun popcorn films, aren't they? But so whereas um, in previous films, Godzilla was seen uh, as a bit of a saviour having fended off other titans, as they call the other giant monsters in the films. This time, it looks like his loyalty has shifted, as seen by an unprovoked attack by the giant lizard himself. <laughs> and this is where Kong comes in. Uh, so taking place five years after uh, King of the Monsters from 2019, um, there's a slight sort of follow-on from that. I think, again, I have not seen it, but I understand that there's the only two returning characters from that film and that this monster verse are Millie Bobby Brown's character, um, and uh, which is um, Madison Russell and her father as well. That's but right. The I've seen it. Are. I've seen it. They are, and obviously Godzilla. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, so yeah, it takes place five years after that, uh, and the film in a very odd, very odd plot, which I'm sure we'll go to a little no, bit. But we're not no, it's not odd it. at all. But we're not going to spoil it. We're not going to spoil it. But it follows a team um, that are travelling to Hollow Earth, which is basically the Earth's core, which is a secret underground home of the Titans. <laughs> uh, and that's on behalf of a shady corporation which are seeking to harness its energy source. Uh, so they basically transfer transport Kong uh, away from Skull Island, where he is, where he's living, uh, so that he can guide them on their well, mission. Well, is he? Well, he's is in he like a, he's in, well, again, let's not, let's not, let's let people watch it. Let's make, let them make their mind up. <laughs> um, yeah, but so he guides them to Hollow Earth, but there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, so again, I'm not going to spoil it because you know a lot of people will be looking forward to this. But to be honest, plot wise, it it doesn't really matter. 
it, it it seems pretty pointless to have any sort of plot in a film like this. <laughs> and it's it's a bit rubbish anyway. Um, there's no real like character development to go into, uh, and basically any, any character stuff there is is just dragging out the bit that you want to see, which is the two titans going head to head. Don't get me wrong; like the performances in it are fine. There's it's, it's nothing terrible in it. it you know there's that sort of mix of this they always have it in this kind of film it's like that action sort of humor isn't it like you know one-liners and stuff yeah. there's yeah. nothing awful in it uh, you know the script again it's it's nothing amazing but it's never going to be anything amazing in a film like this where the, those characters like the, the human cast are sort of playing second fiddle to these two huge monsters um you know and it's it's popcorn cinema at its finest and you, you don't really you know i don't think you personally i didn't really care what was going on you just sort of spend the time enjoying the ride <laughs> um that being said for me and the main star of the show is the quality the sheer quality of the cgi in this which is absolutely top notch like i i'm i love like really good cgi um and this is the kind of film that really makes you realize how far it's come in recent years. You know, I know mm. we've had good CGI for a long time, but mm-hmm. this is seriously like next level. I would say it just looks amazing. Um, but the scenes of Godzilla and Kong like battling through like neon Hong Kong in the city at night. It's amazing. It's a proper feast for the eyes. It's, it's really good. And that whole, you know, the battle that's in the trailer, like where, Kong slaps Godzilla around the chops on the top of a, a Navy like uh, aircraft carrier. Yeah. Just yeah. brilliant. Um, there's some really good camera work in it too, considering a lot of it will be virtual camera stuff, mm-hmm. but really well directed and some really clever sort of um, camera sequences from the ship where it sort of flies around the, the big monsters while they're battling and you sort of, see glimpses of them from the ship. I think it's really good. I really you, you're talking about the, the spaceship that they're flying inexplicably the around the in spaceship for the majority flying. of the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, but I think shots like that really help to give scale in something yeah. like this because it, you know, it does help you sort of appreciate how big they are. And it gives you like, you, you know, you can just really feel like the weight of the hits that they're doing on each other. Um, so I think that's been that was quite clever. I think a lot of the time, I think with films like this, with huge fights and loads of destruction and stuff, you can you can get a bit lost in it if it's not cut together well or it's not framed mm. well. I think it could just become a bit messy and a big sort of smoky mess. Uh, but for me, this one was done really well. Um, I think, as I said earlier in the podcast, the only problem with this is it's a film that begs to be watched on the biggest screen possible and as loudly as possible like this mm-hmm. is, or on drugs or on drugs or, 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 yeah, or all three yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> um so yeah and cinemas aren't open here yet so i have to settle for yeah. my tv and a decent pair of headphones but you know i wasn't disappointed anyway i listened to it loud and it just it was it was great i really got sucked into it uh i'm pretty sure i'm going to be watching it again pretty shortly as well um so yeah, in my view, if you want to sit back, relax in sheer joyous cinematic brilliance, uh, enjoy watching a giant ape and a giant radioactive lizard knock the living shit out of each other, <laughs> I can highly recommend it. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is available to watch now in cinemas where they're open and to stream on all major streaming services. Fantastic. So, what did you think, Miles? Well, I want to watch it again now because I think we were watching a different movie. But right. but but fortunately, I was I wasn't watching this to critique it. I was just watching this because I knew you were going to review it and I could just relax. So, um, for, for me, I, I, I agreed to be honest with you know CGI points. There was like barely a moment in the movie where there was no CGI. I'm trying to think of one scene where there was no CGI. Was, yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah, not many. Insane how much money and time they've spent on this. Um, yeah. I do think, you know, you talk about the performances. I do think, like, it's it's hard to critique these kind of films without, you know, kind of missing the point, right? Like, you, yeah. you, you know, it's a it's Godzilla versus King Kong beating the <laughs> shit out of each other. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like 
Adam Wingard, he's a great director. He's come from a lot of very small, intimate movies. I do feel like he he may not have done the best getting the best out of the cast. I feel like they were, um, I don't know, some of the performances I just thought were very, very dry. Yeah. Even like Millie Bobby Brown, who I think is brilliant. Mm. Um, I don't think it's a good role for her, to be honest. No. But again, I've not, not seen the last one, so I don't know what she's It's like all exposition, there. isn't it? And like yeah. some of the dialogue is so... Yeah, you know, it's the most contrived stuff you're going to see for this kind of thing. It's just, yeah. Yeah. But but like going back to like the original, you talk about the 2014 Godzilla, like it was set very much in the real world as if monsters yeah, it was existed. A lot darker in a way as well. Yes. Film. But going on to, serious. but going on to like Godzilla King of the Monsters, that introduced a, a kind of sci fi element, a fairly light sci fi kind of, um, kind of element. But this, uh, <laughs> I mean, like from the trailer, you don't see, you expect this movie to be Godzilla versus Kong. It's, it's kind of is, but the synopsis that you just gave is the true synopsis of this movie, which is this hollow earth theory mm. and this whole thing that's going on that we won't go into. But yeah. I feel like they sold this as like a kind of Jules Verne meets Godzilla meets King Kong meets. And the, the final thing is very fucking confusing. Like what, what <laughs> comes out by the end of this movie. Yeah. Um, but like you say, it's a roller coaster, isn't it? It's yeah. a roller coaster ride. Yeah. And you know, you get exactly what you what you pay for. So yeah, definitely. I, I can't say I didn't love watching it. I absolutely loved watching it. Yeah. Uh and that's really all you can say about modern cinema, isn't it? Yeah. Not uh, much depth. Yeah. But no. But it's like me, isn't it? Not much depth, but I'm enjoyable. You're pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so what did you watch, Miles? What, what was your? Oh favorite? my goodness me! Well, go from one <laughs> epic to another. Let me let me set the scene firstly. Are you listening closely, children? <laughs> so, in 2017, Marvel is about to release their Phase Four of the ongoing Infinity Saga, which is their uh, Avengers Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, film output. To date, their movies have been smash after smash, bringing up these kind of B-level superheroes, the likes of Iron Man, Captain America, and some weird Norse god with a hammer, uh, up to the levels of a Spider-Man and a and a Superman. To, mm. to be honest, people hadn't really invested in those characters until you know they they were they started making these Marvel-based movies. DC deciding to fire its retaliatory salvos. Uh, quickly puts into production Man of Steel by Zack Snyder, followed by um, a few other movies such as Wonder Woman, which I thought was great, even though it ended in a kind of CGI f- f- kind of fuck fest of like stuff going on that no one really understood. Um, really cliched ending, but a really good movie, great characters and performances. And then the terrible, mundane, morose, depressing Martha fest, Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um, there's also the promise of lighter tone content with Aquaman and The Flash getting into production with their own movies. Um, but in a really premature move, before those movies have even been released, DC and Warners decides to release Justice League, which is, again, an Avengers-type you know, grouping of, of superheroes. Mm. Here, a smorgasbord of a movie, which combined early footage shot by uh, Warner Brothers' golden child, Zack Snyder, who had to depart the movie due to some really sad... Um, personal problems in his family life. And with DC looking to mimic the success and tone, um, rather cynically brought in Joss Whedon, who had directed the first two Avengers movies. Mm. And that movie that came out in 2017, talking about the Justice League, was really bizarre in tone. It was everywhere. It featured really large-scale IMAX print shots, these gorgeous you know, shots that Zack Snyder had, had filmed, moments of typical Snyder bleakness, um, and then Whedon's typically typically self-knowing kind of camera-winking humour, um, kind of breaking the fourth wall almost in places. And it, it even featured a multi-million dollar CGI'd out moustache that, oh. uh, that, that Henry Cavill <laughs> yeah. had grown in between finishing the original Justice League shoot and moving on to Mission Impossible. And basically, he'd grown this moustache and Paramount said he ain't shaving it off during the, the run time of this movie. So he had to go back and they CGI'd it out. It cost Warner Brothers millions of millions. dollars. I've watched a Be- video yeah. particularly about them CGI'ing that out, which was insane. And it looks Did you CGI odd. one on? Because I I always have this like weird little gap in the middle. <laughs> yeah. It's Did you CGI weird. Cavill's uh, mustache on them? <laughs> I can How try. they did it. 
Yeah. It doesn't look great though, does it? I mean, je- look, I've not seen. It's weird. I've, I've not seen Justice League. I've not seen the original one. Okay. Um. So, but I do know about that, and I have watched that scene <laughs> just because I was intrigued about how they uh, do that. But yeah, and that's it. Cool. The fact that there's this like background, this like mythos to that original movie, and what went wrong with it, and yeah. and all of this. The whole thing was a car crash, really. And in hindsight, it's also been uh, met with accusations of sexism and racism towards Joss Whedon, who who stepped in to finish the the project. Mostly reported by the human cyborg actor Ray Fisher, who's part of the the Justice League, mm. which was a role that was reduced to annoying uh, cyborg sidekick number one, and very little else. So. Cut to around a year, 18 months ago, following an unprecedented social and viral outpouring, Zack Zack Snyder is back um, here with his own four-hour, four-hour cut um, of this movie, expunging all of the the Whedon-filmed scenes, including that mustache, and released here uh, in the US on HBO Max, and I believe in Sky, on the Sky Store in, uh, in Europe. So... Firstly, most apparent here is the consistent tone. This is a Zack Snyder movie. It um, feels very similar or akin to uh, the Watchmen movie that he that he made a few years ago. Most of the awkward comedy is gone now, except in the form of Ezra Miller's Flash, who's great in this, but he was more strangely more likable in the Whedon cut of the movie. The significant boosts are a more coherent plot and a villain who has actual stakes. Uh, they originally set up Steppenwolf, as the, the the villain in the first one, but he had no real rhyme or reason as to as to his task. Here, um, he's actually brought in and shown as the henchman to the Thanos-like dark side who sits across the back, the kind of background of the DC EU. If you could sum this movie up in one word, it would be epic. If you could sum it up in three, it would be epic as fuck. Um, but that doesn't make it an easy watch. It has long drawn out moments, such as when Aquaman. Uh, returns to the depths after a conversation with Ben Affleck's Batman, uh, which shows a large group of very blonde women inexplicably singing to the camera in Icelandic for about four minutes. Um, (laughs) There are some genuine moments where I thought I was watching a collection of music videos. Um, (laughs) But the, the music strangely doesn't really work for a lot of the scenes that they accompany. It's really weird. I think there's a, a Nick Cave song in this as well. Right. It's strange. Strange also is the end. So a spoiler free review such as mine will say that they are fucking going for it in the end. It goes to a kind of flash forward, shall we say. Okay. Right. But as one Dr. Ian Malcolm would say, just because you can doesn't mean that you should. Uh, and I would say the most coherent point I took away from this movie is that they're, these are very much the Snyder characters that he's kind of set up previously. But at no point does Batman or the virtually mute Superman feel anything close to the true representation of their characters. They just all seem like miserable people that kind of have to get together to do something to save the planet. Even Aquaman, with his balls-to-the-wall comedy from his own standalone adventure, is a miserable bastard in this. Um <laughs> The, the success in this movie is, I would say, the redemption of Ray Fisher's uh, cyborg, who comes online almost a third of the way into the runtime. Um, but his character seem, seem, seamlessly carries the movie, and he's pretty much the victor from it as well. And with the news that he left the role following fallouts with Warners because of the some of the accusation that aimed at, at the, the previous director, Joss Whedon, it's sad to know that there may never be a continuation of Cyborg's arc in, in this specific uh, uh, movie universe, mm. especially as it's clear that Zack Snyder really favours his character over Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and all of these other you know, wonderful um, superheroes that they've got kind of grouped up here. Um, but finally, if, if, like me, you don't feel like these are your version of the characters that you grew up with, and they absolutely are not, these are not the true DC characters as a representation. This is something altogether darker and and different. Um, I have to say that if you're a film goer and you're interested in, you know, an unprecedented, unprecedented moment in Hollywood history, this is a movie seeking redemption, a director seeking catharsis from considerable personal loss. And more impressively, an audience uh, revolting against one of the big five film studios to actually deliver on the promise of, of a movie. 
And none of that makes this a great one, but it does make it unmissable. So that's Justice League, which is available uh, in the US on HBO Max and in theaters and in Europe, as I said, on Sky and the Sky Store. Brilliant. Can we lighten the tone now, Phil? If you like. It's time for this. Hello, Phil. Hi. Oh, hello. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the video store. <laughs> hello, sir. Uh... <laughs> hello. You can call me. You, my father was sir. You can call me Miles. Hello, Miles. <laughs> hello. <laughs> so it's uh, it's a Friday when we're mm. recording this. It it's is. video store day. Yep. Take a walk around the hallowed aisles. Is there anything you'd like to rent <laughs> this week? Well, I've heard that there oh. is an 80s film that i Oh, you have seen. to go through the curtain at the back, sir. The, the dark curtain at the back. That's where oh, no, we not that one. Our... It's, no, it's oh, quiet. Oh. Not that one. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, this one is, I was told by someone that uh, there was a 80s film mm. based on arm wrestling <laughs> that I'm quite interested in seeing. Who told you about that? I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about Sylvester Stallone's Over the Top? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over the you, top. You'd never seen this. This blew me away. On our last episode, our listeners, our, our regular listeners, will realise that we mentioned this in passing. I can't even remember why. I mentioned because, it because you were, there's a film that's being released that sounds exactly like it, featuring women instead of men. And you said exactly. what, like Sylvester Stallone's Is Over it, the Top? And I was like, Sylvester Stallone's what? I've never heard of that. That blew my mind. It was, yeah. it was something to do with a tough lady trucker. As soon as you tough said lady tough trucker. lady trucker. Well, I, you're know a tough tough lady trucker. I know a tough man trucker that does our wrestling. So do I. What's his name? <laughs> Lincoln Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone as Lincoln Hawk in yes. 1987's greatest arm wrestling based movie <laughs> starring Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Do you think this was the only film released in 87 that was about arm wrestling? I think it might have killed the cinema in 1987 and therefore it was the only film in 1987. Um, <laughs> Nothing came out in 87 after this. No, they were like, just stop everything now. We've got over the top. <laughs> We've got enough. Starring Sylvester Stallone as Lincoln Hawk. <laughs> do you want um, to talk us through the syn- synopsis of this one? You want me to do the plot, do you? Okay, mm. so... <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to read it. Uh, Lincoln Hawk Stallone mm-hmm. is a struggling trucker uh, who arm wrestles on the side to make extra cash while trying to rebuild his life. When, he's, when we, you say arm wrestle, yeah. and we know he's a trucker, so he stops at a lot of gas stations and service. What does that actually mean? <laughs> it means... What's he getting know, paid for? He's getting paid to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> with, with big burly men. With big burly men. And shake their arms about until one of them flops onto the table. <laughs> in exhaustion. Grunting. In absolute yeah. exhaustion. After a lot of grunting. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, he does it on the side to, uh, while well, he's trying to rebuild his life. And uh, he basically wants to, after the death of his wife, he tries to make amends with his son who he left behind 10 years earlier. Absolute bastard. What a bastard. Uh, Upon their first meeting, his son does not think too highly of him until he enters (laughs) the World Arm Wrestling Championships in Las Vegas. You know Uh, those, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was there like last year. Uh, His hope is to receive the grand prize of $100,000 and an expensive current custom semi-truck and thus start his own trucking company. Brilliant. Do you know what I like about that synopsis is that the synopsis starts about an hour into the film. Yes. There's a whole hour of this movie where his wife is still alive, (laughs) for example. Yeah, that's right. But in the synopsis, it says, after the death of his wife. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let's speak to her for a bit before that. She's around. She's hanging around. spoiler, she dies. (laughs) Yeah, spoiler alert, she gets, she looks really sick though, doesn't she? And then she dies. Yeah. You could see it coming, couldn't you? To be honest, it wasn't a shock. You, 
You could, you could. And obviously hot on the heels as Sylvester Stallone is kind of traveling across the country with his, his young son, um, Michael, um, they are being followed by the henchman of Robert Logia, who is yeah. Michael's grandfather and also one of the most recognizable faces from the 80s. You'll know him as the old man who danced on a piano with Tom Hanks. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say he's the owner of the, uh, the, the, the store in Big, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's also the yeah. general in Independence Day. Yes, he is. Yep. Uh, yeah. We don't have a uh, crash spaceship. I was in a it's lot of not stuff. entirely accurate, sir. Um, <laughs> and every, every time I hear his name as well, I always think there's a Family Guy episode where he's in it, and they keep every time he enters the room, he's like, "I'm Robert Logia," like all the time. <laughs> like he just repeats for the whole episode. It's really he has weird. a great voice. He must. Yeah. He must be. He, he had a great yeah. voice. Uh, so basically, he, the grandfather has sent the henchman to track them down and try and bring back the the son because let's face it, the son's a little shit. Um, he's a, he's yeah, a he's privileged, a, you know, he goes to military academy and he's like got his prim and proper little military uniform that gets his sleeve ripped off halfway through. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a really <laughs> weird scene where he, he jumps out of the cab, isn't it? Of the car with uh, the truck with uh, Sylvester Stallone and runs across the freeway. And yeah. And does, how does the sleeve get ripped off? Does Sly rip the sleeve off or does it I get caught he rips on like a passing like get, car? No, I think he rips it off trying to like stop him and, Get him to not get run over. Really perfectly ripped off as well, isn't it? It's like completely it's flush. It's like it was meant, like, and you can see the shoulder pad in there. You can. Well, I that, that attention to detail, I really appreciated. I don't know about you. <laughs> I really liked it. Yeah, they really thought about that. Do you know what's funny about that scene? Uh, the did you notice? Because I didn't, but I read about this after, mm. <laughs> and we'll go into more trivia later, as we always do. But mm -hmm. uh, apparently, you know. The kid runs out of the truck and across like a multi-lane highway, like really dangerous. Yep. He's running across it and uh, without a thought. Uh, panicked Lincoln, Sylvester Sloan, is like, oh, shit. Like, he's got to get out of the truck and run after him. But what does he do before he just bolts out? He gets his cap and puts it on. Of course he does. I mean, would you... <laughs> What do you think about grabbing your cap if your son was running across the highway? No. About to be I squashed? mean, if, if I had a son, that's firstly, if I did have a son, I'd be really surprised first off. And I yeah. probably wouldn't, I'd leave the, 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 the cap. Um, but what you've got to remember, there are two types of people. There are, there are anyone that wears caps like you and I are, are right now. Yeah. And then there's Lincoln Hawk. And what yeah. he does is he takes his hat, he turns it around so that he feels like another person, so that he feels like a truck. Like a machine, which is a line lifted directly from his dialogue. <laughs> so he knew by putting on that cap, that was his cape. That's his, his cape. Power. It's his superpower. He puts that bad boy on. He can run across the freeway. He can like probably run straight through the cars. You know. Yeah. He can do whatever the hell he wants. That's his superpower. jump over them. Yeah. I feel like there was a there was a there was a Lincoln Begins prequel to this where he he found that cap like in a magic box. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, yeah. it may, it may, and we never truly know this, but it may actually be imbued with superpowers because he beats some really big motherfuckers in arm wrestling and he is he a very does. small man. He is, yeah. But he's wearing that cap. That's true. But, well, yeah. But I've got, yeah, he does beat some big people. But I do think that um, there's more to arm wrestling than muscle like just mass i think i think it does take a lot of technique on wrestling where, where so let, let's talk about technique so where does the name over the top come from <laughs> it comes from like getting your thumb over the top <laughs> it's like putting your hand he does this weird move which i've never seen before doesn't he in the first one in the truck stop yeah. there yeah he like he's got his they're arm wrestling and to win he sort of what does look look what's look like a dirty trick and he gets their thumb and he sort of like puts his thumb over over the top yeah. of their thumb and then pushes it down. Um, yeah, he gives really them a painful. damn good thumbing, doesn't he? <laughs> he thumbs him right up. And yeah, it, yeah, I, uh, yeah, so I'm guessing that's where it comes from. He's like, hey, I mean, every scene it's like, go over the top. Like, over the top. It's like, it's like this whole like mythology that you, you've never heard. It's like in 
in like wrestling, you watch WWF growing up, it's like pin him, pin him, you know, and you know what pinning means. Yeah. But in this, it's like everybody, they all know it. everyone in the audience, everyone in the bar. Oh my God, he's going over the top. <laughs> and all he does is just like move his index finger over the guy's thumb. <laughs> just they just stroke thumbs for a bit. Yeah, just gently strokes his thumb, and just repositions his hand. <laughs> he's going, oh my God, he's going to win. Uh, and uh, which is incredible. There's also, confusingly, a section in this movie that takes place in the rest of the arm wrestling tournament. Yeah. And they also, when they get down to the final, I think it's the final six competitors, mm. they also announce, and this is it, ladies and gentlemen, we're excited to announce that we are finally going into our over the top section of the tournament. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, so is it called over the top because there's this section of the tournament called over the top and he's reached that? Or is it because he likes to go over the top of the thumb? I <laughs> Wow, you went deep into that, didn't you? Yeah. I think um do you know what? There was a lot less arm wrestling in this than I than I thought was there was gonna be. <laughs> than I thought there was previously advertised. Well, do you do with the problem I'll tell you the problem is with there is. So firstly, as you say, there's a full hour bef- I mean, we see one arm wrestling fight in the first hour, don't we? Uh yeah. Not including the kids. Okay, right, yeah, one. All right, you could include one. the kids because there are three actually in that. They do two yeah. out of three. Yeah, but there's not, there's nothing like, you know, the the, the cover of this movie, the post of this movie, has got Sly like with his arm, his bicep out, and he's like about to arm wrestle someone. Mm. There, it, this is very much a family based '80s movie. Yeah, until about an hour in. Yeah, would you say? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't go off the rails or anything. It's just, it's just, I wanted more arm wrestling, if I'm honest. But the thing is with arm wrestling, and this is this is what I realized, is that arm wrestling literally takes 30 seconds. It's literally 30. This is not even Drago versus Apollo Creed, you know, 12 rounds of pure like man on man, you know, two minutes per round. This it's is 30 wrestling. seconds. It's <laughs> literally put your hand up. Let's hold hands for a little while. Someone pushes the other hand down. That's the winner. Yeah, so, there's only, you know, to be fair, there is only so many ways you can make an arm wrestling match look that exciting. <laughs> exactly. And, and then- that is... To go over the top, over the top, and 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 also to film it in slow motion, in incredible slow motion, yeah. so that you can make each round last at least two minutes. Well, they do which that is trick what of like dropping the frame rate, and it exactly. makes it look really dramatic. Yeah, but the reason yeah. they did that is clearly because they were like, "We need to eke this whole bit out." But actually, it was just like, "Click done." <laughs> Arm wrestle. And we were like, Done. wow, he's going to go. Oh, he's going the other way. No, he's going the other way again. Oh, my God, he's going over the top. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. I mean, have you got any observations about this? That <laughs> no, no, I don't feel. None at all. No, not a single observation. I'm not got- watching a film starring Sylvester Stallone <laughs> where he's called Lincoln Hawk and he's going up against men called John Grizzly and Bull Hurley. <laughs> the, I'll tell you the one observation that my neighbours had is that I was potentially watching the most aggressive homoerotic <laughs> porno <laughs> possible. And that's There's because a, not only are the men grunting for the duration of this movie, it's so like, much oh, fun. oh, and, nah. then, and then you hear like, get him, daddy, get him, daddy. And then, and then, and then <laughs> but it's also because there's, there is no, uh, no music. And we'll talk about music in a minute, but there's no okay. music accompanying any of the arm wrestling fights. So no. it is just the loudest grunting of like two men. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that you can ever hear. <laughs> And, Just the other uh, guy going, you're mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take you. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's true. God, uh, I didn't think about that. So that that was, uh, that I would say, was my biggest. And the all of the people in my building, was their observation was was definitely that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would you say was the best thing about this movie? Did it deliver on the promise of Sylvester Stallone in an arm wrestling movie? Well, as I said, I thought there was going to be more arm wrestling, but probably glad there wasn't, <laughs> if I'm honest. I didn't know what to expect going in because I didn't even like watch the trailer. And when you said about it, I was like, I really want this to be a complete surprise. I didn't expect the story to be what it was, like with the kid. I didn't expect a kid, a kid to be in it, basically. Mm. So I don't know. I'm a bit on the fence with this one. Like, I quite enjoyed it. It was actually like, I, I think I said at the end of watching it that that was probably better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I think it's one of Sly's best movies. Oh my God, really? Yeah, well, I think it is. In fact, I think I used to think it was. And then I watched it again today 
And I was like, this is not a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> this you know, is actually a really bad. I picked up on really a few bad things movie. in it that were one, did you notice the very odd uh, Alka Seltzer product placement in this film? Did that stick out to you? No, I don't think I did. No. So one of the arm wrestlers in the competition is wearing an Alka Seltzer t shirt, which I thought, well, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Fair enough. Might have been sponsored or whatever. But then there's another scene about two minutes later where it cuts to a glass on the table, like mid competition, where Sly's like putting Alka Seltzer in the glass and drinking it. And I didn't, see, like, I didn't even notice that. Box. But yeah. I did have two Alka Seltzer after I watched it. That, there you go then. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> See, it worked. It worked like a charm. And I, I arm wrestled someone. I challenged someone to an <laughs> he arm wrestle. You. You went outside. Like you, come here. I was Over like burping all the Alka Seltzer up. Like, sorry. Um, let's have an arm wrestling match. <laughs> My name's Hawk. What's your name? Uh, and also, this is more of you know, how much material uh, needs to be on the top half of your body for it to be classed as a t-shirt. <laughs> because there's some yeah, and not and not like, just suspenders no yeah i mean because they look like what you know because there's some massive dudes in this like at the end yeah. of the arm wrestling and they're wearing like what can only be described as a t-shirt thong it's like mm. it's like what's the point of it you've ripped it to the point of there's just a bit of the neck and it's just like, it's not even covering the nipple belly. it's like it's no. hanging like to the, the nipples are actually stopping the material from closing over your chest <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah i mean what's the point at that point what is that t-shirt doing for you i don't know but i think we'd have to ask some of the female audience what what the t-shirts were doing <laughs> for them uh, but if, the, if you're asking me it, <laughs> it didn't do a lot for me <laughs> Although I can they definitely were, imagine you wearing some of those. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, they were very oiled as well. All the men were very oily. Question. Have you ever worn a vest with a pair of braces or, or suspenders on your trousers? No, because I'd look like, and only certain people are going to know who this is, Rabsy Nesbit. You would look like Rabsy Nesbit. <laughs> if anyone, and I, and weirdly, after, do you know hey, what? Do you know what's weird? Hey, you fucking did. <laughs> I went down there and fucking collect my fucking dollar money. And he's fucking doing it. Do you know what he's done? <laughs> part of the reason I said that is because after we watched Over the Top last night, we turned it off and and Rab C. Nesbitt was on TV. Was, was he wearing like, the same outfit? This. Yeah, the as, string vest and the, as Lincoln the, Hawk. And the bandana. Uh yeah. If anyone wants to know who that is, look up Rab C. Nesbitt on mm-hmm. <laughs> YouTube. Um Who's your favourite character in this, Miles? Do I have to answer it? Yes. Um, it's definitely not the son. It's a little shit. He's a twat. It's got. I mean, it can only be Lincoln Hawk. There are no other answers, are there, Phil? Well, is it the teenager is, with bad breath? <laughs> no, not that idiot. No, mine's uh, one of the uh, arm wrestling contestants. Is it Harry John, Bosco? No, it's John Grizzly. Oh, you know the one. This guy. <laughs> so this guy looks like. Um, He's an old WWF guy. It was like he looked like Hill, Hacksaw Hillbilly, Jim Duggan. Well, he looks like Hillbilly Jim, like or whatever he was, crossed with Hacksaw Jim Duggan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. wearing like a camo vest, another vest, massive beard, unkempt, uh, and he starts in the. I mean, this was amazing. He starts his first round of arm wrestling with um, Lincoln with a cigar in his mouth, and I thought, bloody hell, like. You wouldn't want to be arm wrestling with it, like smoking a cigar at the same time. And obviously he didn't either, because what did he do after that, Miles? What did he do? He ate the cigar, didn't he? He just sucked it into his mouth and chewed on it. Is that what he did? Did he do that? Yeah, he ate his cigar. Was he the one that drank like a pint of motor oil as well? Well, yeah. And this brings me on (laughs) to like my best line. So in in the next scene, when you see him in the second round, he says to Lincoln, he says... I'm going to go through you like gas through a funnel. And then he (laughs) drinks Valvoline oil Oil. through a funnel, like through a a jar of oil or or a can of oil, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah, He's my favorite character. He ate his cigar, then literally drank oil. (laughs) I like him. Lucky the cigar wasn't lit, wasn't he? I mean, I know. I mean, he had to wash the flavor out of his mouth or something. 
Maybe that's why he had the Alka Seltzer. I bet he needs some Alka. That's a different one. I bet he had some Alka Seltzer after that. Do you know, I've got a bit of a dicky tummy. Lincoln, you haven't got Lincoln. Look, you haven't got any Alka Seltzer. Go, why don't you go ask the guy that's wearing the Alka Seltzer T-shirt? Yeah, I think I will. He's, Sorry, I think he's sponsored a couple by of your Alka Seltzer. Yeah, he's got there in his uh, bag. In his gym bag, he's got. It's just full of Alka Seltzer. Yeah, he's just throwing them out to the crowd. Yeah. Like, Do you want a Alka T-shirt? Seltzers. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Um, I think my my favorite line was. Um, for no other reason than the fact that I had to turn my TV down again during the the fights, which was a moment in between some really heavy grunting between clearly two different men, yeah. like ah oh, and ah oh, was I own you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. That. And I was like, just going to turn the TV down a little bit now. Um, <laughs> Do you know what's weird he's, as well? He's having like, a good time down there, isn't he? Those lines yeah. are also put on after the fact. Um, oh, yeah. So I find it quite hilarious, the thought of those guys in the studio, like, recording all those lines and then the sound editor having to put them all over the top. Over the top! Mm. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> what a link. So not only did they go over the top, they got to the over the top round and then they added the dialogue over the top over at the, the end. Top. Wow. Jeez. This movie's deeper than I thought it was. Isn't I mean, it? really, it goes all the way, doesn't it? Yeah, all the way. I, I, I also like how the, the grandpa who fucking hates Lincoln Hawk for no apparent reason, but fucking hates him. Really hates him. Um, I love it. He, he, the kid runs away and he goes to Vegas on his own. Yeah. And the grandpa finally finds him in, in Las Vegas in the middle of this massive, like, 10,000-person arena. And yeah. he's, like, sitting at the front and he walks up to the kid and, like, he's been trying to kidnap this kid, like, physically kidnap this kid using yeah. his henchmen throughout the whole film and he gets there and it's just as Sylvester Stallone is about to enter the over the top round the final round and yeah. he's going up his comp- up against his competitor and the kid's sitting there watching it and the grandpa finally after trying to get this kid and spending all his money and his resources together walks up behind the kid and he goes there you are and then he goes he goes oh hey grandpa and he's like as soon as this match is over we're going home. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Not right it's now. Like the whole fucking movie. He's been trying to get this kid. He's fucking <laughs> sent like four or five people, goons, to go and get him. And he finally yeah. gets him. And he's like, he's like, as soon as this, because I actually want to see this. As soon as this <laughs> is actually, over. Now I'm here. We're, well. we're going, now we're here. I mean, it's Lincoln Hawk, isn't it? He's married to my daughter for a couple <laughs> of years. See, might see, as if well. see, see if he wins. See if he wins. And do you, know what's, do you know what's amazing about that? He sold his truck, didn't he? He did. guess what he wins? A truck. A brand new truck. <laughs> I was shocked at the value of that truck. It was expensive. It's true. It was, mm. the, the prize money for the competition was $100,000 and a truck. And the truck was worth $250,000. And this was in... That's like, that's a li- it's a livelihood though, isn't it? That's why. Yeah, it is. But in 87, I mean, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Mm. It's a hell of a truck though. N- nice truck. Volvo, again, sponsorship. Done. <laughs> was it? Oh, of course it was. What does, what does it say? Wolverine. Or well, at least you can read. <laughs> I know. It's like, I love product. I hate and love product placement in films. I think they did it in a, I don't know, less subtle way in the 80s. It's a bit more subtle now. The less subtle, the better, I think. I think the less subtle, yeah. the less subtle, the better. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just going to drink my Coca-Cola. <laughs> I'm just by the now product of the Coca-Cola company. <laughs> um, what was your favourite scene? In oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Mm. I think it was the scene in the in the diner with the kids when he, when ba- basically, so, I mean, to set the scene, we have Sly here, right, mm. who is an absent father. He's been absent for 10 years in his 12-year-old son's life, letting his kid drive his 18-wheeler truck on an actual yeah. road with other cars around, Yeah, um, taking him into dive bars with men called Smasher. Yep. Yeah. Was it Smasher or Slasher? I feel like it's Smasher. Uh, Smasher. Smasher. Um, abandoning in him in said bar so that he can take part in a illegal uh, arm wrestling match, yeah. hustling some guy. Yeah. Um, and then forcing his young son, who he's estranged from and has been on the run from basically his whole life, forcing him, grabbing him by the arm and forcing him to arm wrestle this blonde teenager that's playing pinball. <laughs> With a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> with a mullet. Yeah. Um, but that was my favorite scene simply because of the 80ness of it all. There was a yeah. there was a Mario Brothers arcade machine. They were in a 
American diner, you know, like the yeah, side yeah. of the freeway. Kids playing pinball. Punk you had like the kid with a mullet and his the blonde gloves punk on. kid that was like you know, leather leather gloves. Exactly, it was like Kiefer Sutherland or something. You know, it was yeah. just the most eighties moment. And we all remember being like embarrassed by our parents, like at a young age as well. So that feeling yeah. of that. Um, but I, I quite like that for that reason. I, I feel like that was my was my favorite scene. But I feel like I may have forgotten some. What was your favorite scene? I liked it, and you can see it coming a mile off. But when he arrives at the the mansion that his granddad, that the kid's granddad owns, and Lincoln turns up in his truck because he wants to see his son. Yeah, and they don't like the henchmen don't let him in, do they? They're like he doesn't he want to see mental. you. Like anything, oh no! So he backs he it, so they're, they're like you, you. You've got to go like now. Back that thing out of here. So he backs it up, and you think, oh, he's gonna go. And then, but he doesn't go, does he, Miles? What does no. he do? He puts his foot on the gas, and he drives through the gates. But then, this is why I like this scene so much. It went. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. It went over the top. Because <gasps> not only did he own, not only he, he didn't just bust through the gates, he carried on. He drove yeah. over the lawn, through the statues, across the, the gardens, fountains. through a fountain, yeah. and then it didn't even stop there. He went into the front of the house. So that yeah, the front he went door through the in. doors. Like he, he did the structural front damage to that very expensive house. Yeah, and yeah. I thought that was beyond the call of duty. <laughs> Well, when his grandfather's saying that he's a bad father and he does this, he does that, and you know, he, yeah, he drives he's not an adult. adult. And then he drives and destroys your house and tries yeah. to kill them. Brilliant scene, though. Was it was it ever resolved? Like, did we ever really see a true resolution to the whole the, situation with the just, grandfather? Did they? Did he? Did he even see the grandfather? Where after the after the fight? After he drove through the house. Yeah, he went in and he was on the staircase, wasn't he? After the arm wrestling bit. Oh the no, tournament. not after. No, no. Weird. Basically, well, that was what, never resolved. As uh, he just got custody. Well, no, because uh, we I discussed this because I was watching this with Carly, my wife, and uh, she said, did he just kidnap? He, he just kidnapped him. He just kidnapped he his son because he didn't have custody over his son. He gave up the rights to that. He signed him away, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, and and they're like, all laughing his and, son out and smiling. Like money. To but do you like could see fight. that he was, at the end, you know, Robert Bogier had a bit of a tear in his eye, didn't he? When he won, so you think, oh, maybe he softened up a bit. Maybe Redemption. He likes him, maybe he likes him really. His daughter said that he was okay and blah blah blah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Did you notice also that one of his um, henchmen was uh, Terry Funk, the very, the very own Terry Funk, <laughs> who yeah. we also know from uh, Roadhouse. Yes, we do. Yeah, must have been like what year was Roadhouse? It must have been very similar, very similar time, very close when yeah. Terry Funk was making his play to become an A-list Hollywood star as, as henchmen. He was, he was really the first Dwayne Johnson of his time, wasn't he? Terry Funk. <laughs> Terry Funk. From yeah. professional wrestling into uh, into, into Hollywood movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. That didn't last long, sadly. No, not really. And he was rubbish in it as well. He just got put through a door. That was it. I don't really remember him saying anything. He did get put through a door, <laughs> he didn't he? He got put through the door in the hotel. That was it. Um, do you want some trivia for this? Yes, I would love it. Right. Phil's trivia section. <laughs> I've still got to do a, a thing for this, haven't I? A, no, you don't. I just did it. Oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> this is a good one. Years later, after the film, Sylvester Stallone explained why he agreed to appear in this movie. Yeah. So uh, the director was called Menahem Golan. Uh, he kept offering, he, and Sylvester Stallone says, he kept offering me more and more money. Until I finally thought, what the hell? No one will see it. <laughs> and that's why he did this film. No one will see it. Yeah, he directed cool. he did direct and produce Cobra as well, didn't he? Same yes. director. Cobra, yeah. Um this 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 I absolutely loved, right? So as an inside joke, the writers named David Mendenhall's character Michael. So that's the son, right? Yeah, the kid. Named him Michael. Uh and with his father's last name. That meant that his character's name is Mike Hawk. Mike Cork. Mike, Mike Hawk. Hawk. Mike Hawk. <laughs> Only Mike works Hawk. in an American accent. But yeah, it's great. It's weird as well in this, in that in that they they go from calling him Lincoln Hawk, and in some scenes they call him Lincoln Hawks. Like when he yeah. goes to the hospital and they to to find out that the the mum has died and the nurse says, Sir, wait here, I'll have to go get a doctor. And the doctor comes over and he goes, Mr. Hawks, 
I'm afraid yeah. to tell you, your wife is dead. She died on the operating table. <laughs> By the way, there's zero, he has zero no empathy, emotion. that doctor. Yeah, none at all. He's like, he's like, Mr. Hawks, he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm afraid to tell you, your wife died on the operating table about two hours ago. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and scene. The slide's yeah. like, uh, acting, uh, I'm acting. Like, Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Um, this one. So the the truck that he drives, his um, the OG truck, rig, the OG yep. truck, uh, mm-hmm. also appears in the. And we again found this very similar in plot wise. Also appears in the nineteen eighty nine movie, The Wizard, about video games. Wow! And it's a it's a similar plot when you think about it. It is. It's like road movie. You know, very like short only, movie as well. Yeah, Same. and only you know kids like in the wizard like traveling together but you know it's the fact that you've got like those scenes and those sort of diners you had the mario uh like arcade machine in there um but it's the same truck it also appears in that film that's really weird because when i told a friend of mine i was watching over the top yesterday he said oh i love over the top and the wizard like at the same go. time yeah so, yeah so yeah they are. i never Very saw similar. that before i never saw that before but that's you're totally right yeah, yeah. um and then uh, Sylvester Sloan was reportedly unhappy with the final film uh, in an <laughs> in an interview unsurprisingly with, <laughs> in an interview with Ain't It Cool News uh, he said that if he directed the film he would have changed the setting to an urban environment uh, uh, he would have used scored music instead of rock songs and made the Las Vegas oh. finale more ominous I mean. What's he talking about? The yeah, I, um, don't know. I think that was bad. The score was amazing. The soundtrack was amazing. Giorgio Moroder yeah. teaming up with none other than Kenny Loggins. Yeah. The first time since Top Gun. Yeah. Like uh, what Sammy are you Hagar. About? Sammy Hagar's in there as well. well. And it, and and as I was saying last night when we watched it, it's one of those films that's got its own theme, and which they never yeah. do anymore. Where it's like yes. a proper eighty so it's like over the top. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 Like the uh, touch. Yeah. Transformers as well, that kind of. Oh, other. all of them. Got, yeah, like from twins, from, like when yep. um, Secret of My Success, Secret of My Success. All the good eighties films oh, have their own Secret theme. Of my yeah, they all have their own. American theme. Flyers is another good one. Kevin Costner. It's a it's oh, a yeah. road biking movie, and that's got an amazing theme tune. Oh, Let's go, American Flyers. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that anymore. They really should. they don't. I used to run to a collection of those exact songs. Well, they're the best songs. They're all I listen to. Us You're the best around. <laughs> no, see, that was on there as well. Yeah, I know. It's all, it's all there. Um, so one last thing, which I thought was quite funny. Uh, well, I'll preface that with. Uh, so the guy who plays the enemy of, of Sly in this, uh, Bob Bull Hurley, that's his character name, is played by a guy called Rick Zumwalt, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and sadly, uh, he died in 2003. But I was looking at his um, his credits list, which, <laughs> I'm just gonna, which I'm just going to bring up now. So on IMDb, right? And I thought, I wonder if he played any like, because he's just basically like a massive meathead in this, isn't he? He's just like a big oh, yeah. early guy yeah. that does nothing but grunt. He looks uh, like the big show, doesn't he, from WWE? But he's like kind of He looks like before. the big show. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He looks like. You know, a big bald guy with a handlebar moustache, basically. But he, um, <laughs> so I'm just going to try and find his, um, let me try and find his, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> his IMDb page. His filmography. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he, so <laughs> I'm going to give you some character names from, uh, or the credit, uh, not even a character name, because most of the time he didn't have a name. He was just uh, credited as like a, mm-hmm. A profession or a, a description, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give you naked some. bald man in prison so, shower scene. So, so his first <laughs> film was in '87. It was over the top, and he was bald. This was his bald. first film. This was his first film, and he had a career after this. Yeah, yeah. But uh, his next film, he played a uh, huge cop, right? Sorry, huge, huge cop. cop. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> cop. Um, I'm going to skip a couple because he actually had some character names. Uh, in 1988, in the Presi- uh, Presidio, he played Bully in Bar. Uh, 
then in you've got uh, rid of a few of those in your time haven't you <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then in 89 he played soldier number three uh he played a guy called tiny workman number one uh barney the shiv <laughs> Love it. Uh, that was definitely a prison movie. Whatever that no, it was. wasn't. It, it was, was Freddy's. A... It was. It was in a TV episode of Freddy's Nightmares. In what? Nineteen eighty-eight. Yeah, one episode. He played Barney the Shiv. Uh, he also played Gambler in Married with Children. Uh, <laughs> he's in a film uh, which I really want to see called Rockula. Uh, it's got a really <laughs> cool cover, but he played someone called Boom Coming Boom. soon. Um, and then he played Goon. Uh, uh, Mountain Man, Dorman, Big Bud, Slime Bag, Delp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that one gets my vote. Yeah. Uh, tattooed Strongman, Burly Guy, um, Carolina Crusher, Musclehead, Cromwell's Bodyguard, Convict Prisoner, Coach Andrews, and Biker with Bandana was his final role in 2001. <laughs> in the R.I.P. Rick Zumwalt, we salute you, sir. Indeed. He was in, apparently he was he was tattooed strongman in Batman Returns. That's right, he was. Yeah, yeah. which was definitely one of his biggest uh, movies, not necessarily his biggest role. Tattooed strongman. Yeah, there we are. Amazing, and that was there over we go. the top, wasn't it? That was it, really. That was it, and um, <laughs> so much more. I'm really glad. This. I'm really glad that uh, you hadn't seen it, so that we got to watch that. I loved it. Um, <laughs> If there's anyone, either of us on this podcast will ever get into professional arm wrestling it is without a sh- and truck driving is without a shadow of doubt, I doubt you. I could see you as an extra in the background of that arm wrestling tournament. Oh, could be, well, one of the contestants? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah, not one of the audience members. You just have to oil me a bit, oil me up. You just have to, well, you just have to drink some oil and eat some cigars and then you'll be have some alcohol halfway there, won't you? <laughs> Wear a skimpy thong t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and grunt to yourself. Oh, I'll practice. I own you. If they remake it, then I'll I'll apply. <laughs> I'll you heard it here my first. Agent. <laughs> Call my agent. Huh? Call my agent. <laughs> um, sounds good. So join us on the next Movie Mouth podcast slice of movie and TV related post- podcast fun. But before then, please follow our Facebook and Instagram accounts at, at Movie Mouth Podcast. And hit subscribe or give us a nice five-star review on your podcast player of choice. Phil. Yes. Do you have any last words? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>